Once positioned, it is important to identify the anatomy prior to commencing the arthroscopy. The patella, the straight patella tendon, the tibial crest, the medial joint line, lateral joint line are all important structures that must be clearly identified. We initiate our process with a medial arthrocentesis. The medial joint space can be palpated adjacent to the patella tendon and the femoral condyle. Using an 18 gauge needle, one can place the needle into the joint, slowly insert until the joint space is breached. Aspiration of joint fluid at this stage is important, particularly if joint fluid examination is to be performed. Following joint fluid collection, distension of the joint is possible. Some surgeons prefer not to distend the joint and make the ports immediately. This is a matter for personal preference. Once the joint is distended, the first arthroscopic port is created. This will be primarily an instrument port in most cases. What is crucial is to determine the position of that port. If one looks at the medial joint line and the condylar arc, placing that port two-thirds of that distance from distal to proximal is recommended. The 11 blade is inserted carefully until the joint is breached. A straight hemostat is then placed into that port to allow distension and opening of the joint capsule. The next step is to place an ingress-egress cannula. The 2.7 blunt cannula flow cannula is preferred. The obturator is placed to the joint level. It is then moved gently around the femoral condyle until it can be run up the medial joint space it is then pushed through the soft tissue until it becomes apparent at the skin level. An 11 blade is used to cut down upon that obturator until it can be inserted through the soft tissue. The fenestrated cannula flow cannula with its associated stopcock is then placed from proximal to distal. It can be threaded over top of the obturator. It now becomes apparent at the port site. Retracting the cannula until within the joint space is recommended. The obturator may be left in place until it should be removed. Attaching a fluid line to the cannula flow cannula will allow fluid to be run into the joint and allow continued distension and flushing of the joint. By tromboning that cannula, you can control the rate of flow and allow that port to remain open. At this stage, the fluid is closed and the second port on the lateral aspect can be established. Palpation of the patella tendon is important. The second port is placed at an equidistant from the patella tendon as the medial port and at the same position proximodistally. Recommencing fluid flow at this point will allow proper evaluation of port depth. Use of the straight hemostat to distend the port is recommended. This will be primarily a scope portal and should not be too large. Placing the scope cannula and obturator into the joint at this point is performed. Removing the obturator from the cannula flow, decreasing the fluid flow, and removing the obturator is the next step in the process. The obturator is removed. The 2.7 short scope is placed. The light post must engage the cannula and the light post should be in equal position in the same orientation as the depression button on the cannula. Once this is locked in position, then the fluid line can be detached from the cannula flow and placed onto the arthroscope fluid line. This port can be opened and the fluid flow commenced. At this stage, we should now have early visualization of the joint. The fluid line leading into the arthroscope is controlled by use of this lever. Fluid flow is now activated and by opening the cannula flow, egress is established. Egress can be controlled by use of the stopcock. Once in this position, it is important to maintain scope stability. By bracing your scope hand against the skin of the patient, it allows you to control the scope without inadvertent insertion or removal of the scope. At this step, we attend to examine the joint to see if we are inside the joint and we can evaluate or establish vision of the cartilage layer. By use of the light post looking upwards, adjustment of fluid flow, distension of the joint can be maintained. In this position, we are looking dorsally at the early portion of the trochlear groove. 
The patella is visualized sitting within the trochlear groove. By extending the leg at the hip, one is able to maximize visualization in this area. To achieve access to the suprapatellar pouch, it is often beneficial to move the scope into the lateral joint recess. That lateral recess can then be followed until one is in the proximal aspect of the joint. At this stage, moving the scope over to a central position is needed. By stabilizing the scope and moving the post, one is able to look into the most proximal aspect of the joint pouch. Rotation of the post allows one to assess this area in terms of synovitis. By gently moving the scope further distally, the egress cannula, the quadricep tendon, the proximal pole of the patella, the proximal portion of the trochlear groove, the proximal portion of the lateral femoral condyle, medial femoral condyle can be assessed. Evidence of medial patella luxation and associated damage will be seen on the medial femoral condyle and on the subsurface of the patella. By slowly rotating the post and moving distally, further evaluation of the subsurface of the patella, the trochlear groove, the femoral condyles can be achieved. Assessment of cartilage damage and grading of cartilage damage should be performed. It is important during this process to collect images. This will allow reassessment, re-evaluation and staging of the joint disease as well as combining to form a complete surgical and medical record. The distal pole of the patella can be evaluated at this position. Once the distal aspect is reached, then the light post is maintained in a dorsal position so that one is looking ventrally with a 30 degree offset. At this point, the leg is then put into a slow and controlled flexion to allow entry into the notch. Visualized here is the notch. Changing focus at this point is appropriate to maximize visualization. The intraarticular fat can be visualized ventrally. The origin of the caudal cruciate ligament is seen with associated synovial proliferation. Further flexion of the stifle will open up the notch and allow the fat to be more carefully seen. At this stage, it is appropriate to place the shaver. The four millimeter torpedo shaver is placed through the medial portal. The challenging portion of arthroscopy is triangulation, and it is important to attempt to visualize the tip of the shaver within the groove. The shaver can be commenced in an oscillating fashion. Suction can be initiated on the shaver handle, and the intraarticular fat can be progressively debrided. Shaving should be judicious, careful, should not damage the normal architecture of the cartilage and or ligamentous structures. When the tip of the shaver becomes inapparent, shaving should be ceased immediately. Removal of the intraarticular fat at this position will maximize visualization of intraarticular structures. The degree of shaving in this patient is now appropriate. It is helpful to remove some of the fat around the instrument portal on the medial aspect and laterally to assess if there is fat impinging upon visualization. The shaver can now be removed. Further fine tuning of focus is recommended. At this stage, assessment of the intraarticular structures is performed. A right angle probe with a measurement capability can be used. The 2.5 millimeter joint probe with gradated measurements is being presently put into the joint. The cranial cruciate ligament can be seen in this position. The intermeniscal ligament will sit directly cranial to it and wrap around the insertion point of the cranial cruciate. To our left is the medial joint compartment and the cranial aspect of the medial meniscus. To our right is the initiation and cranial aspect of the lateral meniscus and the lateral joint compartment. Tensioning of these structures will allow assessment of pathology, stability, laxity. Areas of intraarticular synovial proliferation or fat can be further addressed with use of the shaver. In tighter or more confined areas, downsizing the shaver is recommended. The use of the three millimeter dissector is recommended at this stage. It has a slightly different tip 
and can be placed into tighter areas with ease.